All right, we are walking towards Vibe Gastro Pub, and I want to go in here just like you do. I want to go in here and find out what this place is all about. What's up everybody, Ruben with Fine Fayetteville and I'm with Ambry. Ambry. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm so well. How are you? Doing amazing. All right. So if you don't mind, yeah. tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you do it, and all that good jazz. Hi, I'm Ambry Edge. I own Vibe Gastropub and I'm also the owner of Authentic Cafe, so I've got a food truck as well. Wow. Okay. All right. And how old are you? I'm 33, yeah. 33, okay, so what did that journey look like? I mean, can you just give us like a quick look into what that journey was? Giant mess. Giant mess. Can you break that down for us a little bit? Yeah, so day one, there I was, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go for it. So, uh, yeah, no, so I've, um, I never anticipated owning businesses. Um, my brother, one of my brothers and I, we would like literally sit down and um, have like lemonade stands and every single time he'd be there and he's like, okay, we're gonna make this much money, we're gonna do this many things and this is how we're gonna do this stuff. And I was like, I get to see people. So I never anticipated doing business. Like that was never on the docket. Really? Um, yeah, not at all. How much did you charge for those lemonades? Just curious. Bro, like he was like five dollars a lemonade, and I was like, here's some for free. Was it like five for two, or is it five for one? It, he would like literally. We would set up like discount programs. We were kids. We were hustling. Yeah, we were for real about that bubble gum. Yeah. Real quick, where? It, it, just real quick, where is he at now? So he actually is um, the. I'm gonna mess up his title. He is one of the head people at um, the cigar place in town. The Ansteads? Yep, that's it. So we did one. Let's do a take like Ansteads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Description below, we did one with Ansteads. Oh, Fine really? favor. Yeah, it was really good. Who do you, who do you Locklear. Uh, I don't know people there. Yeah. We should go in there more. Yeah. yeah. So Alex is my brother. But yeah, so uh, then I was uh, 21 and I moved back to Fayetteville, um, 21, 22. And then I, the opportunity to open or to buy the like, coffee house that I'd worked at, a coffee shop that I worked at in the mall came available and I was like, yes, 100% yes. It's so cool. I mean, we have a lot of, uh, especially on the Find Fayetteville channel, we have a lot of coffee entrepreneurs. Yeah. What what about the opportunity of coffee? I mean, where did that come into your world? This is a much longer story, so I won't get into the details. Um, honestly... In three words. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just make sounds. Um, <laughs> um, so I, it was. It happened to be that I, I lied on my resume because I wanted to get a manager job, and okay. I figured I would lie and say I knew anything about coffee. So I did, and I was like, "Yeah, I've managed coffee shops before." And the guy who was hiring was like, "Cool, show me how to work this machine." And I was like, "Oh, that one's so different from the one that I had in my last job. I'll come back tomorrow and show you, okay?" And then I literally went home and Googled how to run oh, an right. espresso machine. Yeah. So I ended up working at this coffee shop off and on through the years, traveling and stuff. And then um, when the opportunity came to buy it, like I, people loved me in the mall, it was just natural and I was like, absolutely, yeah. Like, and it was bizarre that I would own a business. I'd never, I didn't know crap about crap when it came to that, I knew nothing. I was just hustling and I ended up just killing it in there. I feel like that would fear a lot of people if that opportunity came up, they would come up with reasons maybe like, you know, I'm not a coffee person, what am I doing to run a business? What, at such a young age, it pushed you to say, you know what? Nah, this is. I know you've been selling lemonade and slinging some lemonade <laughs> for four hundred dollars a pop, but, um, but, yeah, I bet they had to be. But what, like, what drove you to say? Did you say yes right away? I mean, what did that look like? Oh, okay. Um, so the story actually was, I was uh, a lot of things had happened. They'd shifted in my life, and I was at a pressing point of my days. So I was waitressing at this little tiny shop. Um, I had burned most of my waitressing business bridges because I would just quit jobs. Like it was nothing was serious to me. I was like, whatever, I'll just go get another job. I'll move to Romania. Like it doesn't matter. And um, I ended up, I was sitting at my table and I was editing photos because I did photography. And I was sitting there editing photos and I was just like, um, like, 
this ha there has to be something more to this. Like I, I can't just be stuck here in Fayetteville editing photos. Like this cannot be it. Like I feel something so big inside of me and this is stupid that I'm doing this and making like pennies. Like I don't think this is right. And I just watched, this is gonna sound hippy dippy now because everybody knows, but I just watched the movie The Secret and I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm healthy and wealthy and wise. Everything works out for me. And I closed my laptop and I took a shower. And then when I got out of the shower, I had a text message on my phone that was like, hey, we're selling the shop. If you want it, it was like literally bump bump. And they were like, if you want it, it's you're the first person we talked to about it. And I was like, absolutely. I just, yeah, at that point, it's like the universe is saying, you better listen, yeah. I'm serving this up for you. You better take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, it didn't matter if it was coffee, if it was dog leashes, if it was like aprons, like right, I was right. going, I just, I knew that this opportunity was available and it was right after I asked the question. So it just felt, and I'm big on like, intuition like if it feels right yeah. like and it did I was like let's go and I had a ton of people that were like absolutely not this is the worst idea and I was like my thought was this okay I try it out I lose some money who cares I've tried it at least yeah. if for nothing else like to me it was never a risk it was like it's a risk not to yeah. I have this opportunity if I turn this down how many more of these come along like totally. that's silly I must just give it a go and if it worked out it works out and then it worked out so yeah that's also did you end up selling it yeah so Jesus is so I own the shop for two years um, I ended up turning it around like the people that sold it to me lied on their numbers and so they were like it's doing great it was not doing great it was doing not great mm. super not great um, you live you learn when you're 22 well okay so what was the most not great going on oh um if we can say it oh uh, yeah if they watch this then I know they, they know um, so I figured this a lot of my life I'm like there are gonna be moments I'm doing interviews and I'm gonna be like you guys you guys messed up. well I mean also two things one this is your story yeah and two, it's the truth. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's what I was like, man, this is like it's some hard hitting stuff. So I try to leave names out, but I'm like, thanks guys. It was a it was a tough one. Yeah. So um they basically they'd said that they were making like like it was expensive to own kiosks in the mall. Like it was like a lot. So and then all they're paying for is literally the square footage. You're not getting right. anything with that. Right. So you're paying for everything that it comes with your business. So the people that had sold it to me were like, oh, we're making like thousands of dollars a day. Like, here's our numbers. We And I was like, who did your numbers? And they're like, oh, my aunt, but that's okay because blah, 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 which should have been like a black flag, but whatever. So I was like, okay, sure, whatever. I didn't care. Like it could have been on fire and I still would have bought it. So I was like, all right, bet. <laughs> I'm gonna send it. I know who I'm selling my next business to. <laughs> they're like, listen, don't test Numbers me are good, don't sure. worry about it. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so I got in there and I was just like disgusted. Like there yeah. was like, there was roaches in the mixes. There was the crafts, the coffee crafts that you yeah. like, that the coffee goes in had never been clean, never seen a freaking brush. Wow. Um, they were making, they were making, they were losing money a day because it costs so much to keep it open and nobody was coming to it because of how bad the reputation of this place oh, was. Man. So the first thing I did was I bought, I bought aprons and then I put our, our logo on it, I put all the stuff. I looked at the map of the mall and I was like, okay, there's 40 stores. If I get each one of these stores to give me $10, then I've made our day quota. Cause our day quota at the time was like $300 a day. So I was like, all right, bet I can do that. So I went around with literally like a printed out menu that I laminated myself. And I was like, hey guys, we're doing a coffee run. Do you guys want anything? And then I literally would show them our menu. Cause I'm thinking these kids work in the mall. They're not gonna be able to get away and come to my shop. So I'll come to them. So I started going around and doing deliveries to every single store in the mall. And then I like literally in the first day, like the first week I started turning our numbers from zero people to $800 a day. We cleaned wow. everything. Like we, it was awesome. So yeah. yeah. So what was your, wow, by the way, what, what was your biggest takeaway from that experience? Um, God, there were so many. The I'll biggest. Say, uh, okay. <laughs> all right, let me measure them all up. Um, I would say, uh, I think honestly, the biggest one was probably just like that, that you're literally the only one that can stop you. Like ever in life. There's, there's no reason that a company should fail. Like I tell people all the time, I'm like, I will not fail because I won't let myself. Like I think that that's, and I don't really believe in failure in general. I think that you have the opportunity to walk away from something and that's not failure. That's like sometimes the right move. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that you're the only one that can possibly stand in your way. That's huge. And then that rolled into your next business, which was? <laughs> which was unexpected. Um, so I uh, actually, so I sold, I sold my shop. I had owned it for two years and I sold it and I said, hey, listen, I'm going to sell the shop. But um, what I'll do is I'm going to write up a contract to say if, if you, I want write a first refusal. So I sold it to somebody, I said, listen, I'm telling you right now, you need to spend every waking moment of your life here until you get your feet 
settled and then you can go party and spend money but when you've made a thousand dollars you didn't make a thousand dollars that's not how business works so i tried to tell them and i was like listen if you need me to come back in and train people i will for this this amount of money however if you're not making that amount of money for you to pay me i would i'll stack all those monies that when if ever you close all that money will go towards the equipment so essentially, it's, I'm betting on the fact that either they're gonna stay open forever and I will have invested my time into a productive business, which I'm here for, or they will close, I'll have a uh, right of first refusal and I'll get all of my stuff back. Right. And so that was the goal, that if ever they're taking a ship, that would be the, right. the outcome. Um, the person bought it, uh, they did not, they were not meant for business. They were meant to manage businesses, but they were not meant to yeah. do, to own the, that business at that time. It went quickly under. Really? In the meantime, I had taken the money that I had from selling it and I bought a um, just a utility trailer because my goal was now food trucks they weren't big no one really used them but I figured like it made the most sense I'm no longer paying somebody overhead I can park it anywhere I can do whatever I want so uh, the, the business in the mall rapidly went down um, it started just dissolving I came in to try to keep it afloat it just kept going down it was it was a it was a mess and yeah. then um, I ended up getting all of my equipment back um, when they sold and I didn't have to pay for any of it because I worked at the shop trying to get her, the people Which is awesome because now I have all this equipment and yeah. crappy like I'm like I tried to warn you <laughs> the best I could right. so that happened and then um, I ended up going um, and Getting my I had a food truck But then I just let it sit because I ended up managing an artist for two years and then we went on tour and like did oh, all that cool. stuff Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay so it's, it's just a turn. Well, wow, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so okay, so you, my guess is you use that equipment from the yeah place to put into your trailer or your food truck. Yeah. Your food truck. I'm sorry. It's your a baby food truck. Trailer. It was a baby baby trailer then, so yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. 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 So you threw it all in there, and then what was that next thing? What did that look like? So the goal was I was going to set up this food truck. I was going to make it. It was literally like cut the window and do all the stuff. And then I was going to go basically set up this artist so that we could perform places and I could then take a food truck. Like that was the that was the vision because why not? I'm already managing this artist. Right. I had been managing her. It was just the easiest next step. Right. Um, but that's not how any of that would go. Um, I ended up just kind of like leaving it in the backyard and then, um, <laughs> oh. as one does, yeah. and then I ended up just focusing solely on just managing this artist because I was like, business was what I was in love with. It didn't matter how what form it came in. Um, and then that became, uh, it was just not a workable situation. There, were, there was just a, a split that was happening in just the direction they wanted to go and the direction I wanted to take it in, from a business standpoint. And then it got to the point where I was like, I came to a place, I was on a plane coming back from Mexico and I was like, I need to make a decision. Like either I get, like I read a book called The Secret to the Millionaire Mind and they talked about like <clears throat> the biggest thing that you can do for success is commit. And I didn't even have a phone bill. Like I was like, you want me to commit to something? That's yeah. terrifying. Um, so I then in that moment told myself I would commit to the food truck for five years and then if no one had made a brick and mortar, I would. And because it's, it's a passion for me. It's like I believe right. in what I do. So. Um, but I was praying somebody would, because when they did, I could stop the food truck if I wanted to, I could reassess, and then I could hike the Appalachian, was the goal. So in five years, I was gonna do that, and then boom, I would be hiking the Appalachian. Right. So that didn't happen. No. And you're coming back, I built the food truck. Um, it was a, it was a first 100% plant-based, fully vegan um, food truck in Fayetteville um, and surrounding areas. It was a second, it was both well, third food truck in Fayetteville, really. Um, started getting in there, started just like getting events, um, won some awards for just being sustainable and being vegan and stuff like that. Right. Started really getting into cool like spots with it and then um, that evolved into me needing to build my second food truck. Like I think it was a year or two later so yeah, built my food second food truck from scratch and then like and you recorded that whole experience and then started getting that out there. That started getting really, really popular yeah. and then I was just praying that someone would make a brick and mortar. But they didn't. No. <laughs> no. So what? Why vegan? Is that something that you, that's part of you, or is it you just saw a gap in the market? Great question. Um. So, I uh, went. I went vegan in 2015, and um, I was literally like, I grew up with boys. I, there was never. I was like, there was never a, in my purview a <laughs> vegan lifestyle at all. As a matter of fact, I was getting- It was meat all the time. Every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even to this day, sometimes I'll be eating like, I can't eat like veggie sandwiches. I'm like, but there's no texture. Yeah. I don't understand what's happening here. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I ended up going and I was just getting sick a lot. Like I was 2015, um, I just started getting, my stomach felt super distended after I got done eating, brain fog all day. 
I was tired. I constantly was tired. I just didn't feel good. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go. And I'm gonna have a, a water fast, and then I'm gonna get off it. I'm gonna start eating like vegetarian. So I'll have some chicken, and like yeah. this is my mind. Right. I'll have some chicken. I'll have some like fish. And I'll start eating real healthy, and then you know like see what happens. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, well, I should probably see what these people eat because I have no freaking clue. <laughs> and then I was like, I'll watch a documentary. Um, and I think I was the only person to ever watch this documentary because when I talk about it, people have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, who, who? What? What is it? It's called, so it's called Vegucated. And, and have if, you? If you've watched it, comment below. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like um, <laughs> so I, uh, Vegucated was the documentary. And I remember sitting down, I had my dog and like a big bowl of like chips and cheese and bacon bits and everything. And I was like, if this is some save the whale bullshit, I'm turning it off. Like, I'm not, I'm not here for that. Yeah. And um, I got halfway through and I was like, I can never eat meat again. It was really? done, yep. It was actually one line that, that got me. Um, they, the storyline, watch the movie, you'll find out. But like yeah. basically one guy is talking and he's like, he saw what happened to animals. And I think we all obviously at this oh, point yeah. know. Yeah. But he saw it and he was like, if you can see what they do to animals and feel nothing, then you've lost all sense of empathy or mm. basically in a gist, don't quote yeah. me, but like roughly that. And yeah. I thought to myself like, damn. Like I thought I was a really compassionate person. In my mind, if you ask me, I'm like, yeah, I love animals, I care, I do all these things. And then just to see how out of alignment my life was yeah. to my values, I was like, I can't. Yeah, there's a quote that goes, logic makes you think, emotion makes you act, right? And it sounds like there was maybe a lot of logical, but that one emotional, like, you were like, oh, yep. well, this will be life-changing yeah. for a while. Um, and so to answer the question as to why the food truck yeah. became vegan was, I, I actually was sitting down there and. This, this is actually the, why the name is Authentique, was um, I was sitting down and I was, I was like, I'd made the decision to do the food truck. I had no idea how or what it was gonna be, but I just made that decision. And um, I was like, well, what am I gonna sell? Like, I mean, I was like, I could do hot dogs. Everyone eats hot dogs. I can sell hot dogs like that. And I'm thinking like, yeah, but I'll never eat a hot dog. Like yeah. that will never happen. And I was thinking, oh, well, if I'm gonna do a business, I want it to be authentic to who I am. Like I want it to be true from my heart. That way, if ever I don't make it, at least I'll you know write coffee and food off on my taxes or right. whatever. Right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so I ended up going and um, I was like, fuck it. Like if people don't like. I can sell anything to anyone. Like yeah. you can just try it. And then if, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I remember getting so much pushback. People are like, it's the South. No one is gonna buy vegan organic food in the South. Like yeah. this is gonna, you're gonna plummet. Yeah. They're like, you need to go to Raleigh, you need to go some other place. And I was like, why would I do that? Yeah. Like nothing is here. I, right. I'm gonna do that here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Usually when the crowd says, don't do this. Just and the whole it. crowd, is, yeah, that's every sign in the world that says, well, this is probably where the opportunity lies. Exactly. I was thinking, I was like, why? When people are like, oh, well, you should be, you know, like go where all, all of these people are. I'm like, there's already that there. My heart is sure. to like change this market and then right. we can evolve from there. Yeah, and you want to be authentic about it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what about moving on from that to where we're at now, this beautiful space. The vibe, Gastropub. The vibe. The vibe. Um, so actually, okay, so um, the five years had come and passed and I was like, so I was I was digging my heels into the sand on this. I wanted fast food. I wanted a drive through window because I was like, I, as we talked about earlier, like I see three major things that can create a life change. That's information, connection, and options. And oftentimes people are like, oh, I would go plant-based, but it's just not convenient, or I just don't know, or, you know, like, I, you know, like, yeah, but like protein. So. <laughs> I'm so that guy. Oh my God. I would I'm sorry. Love to talk to you about I know, that. probably. <laughs> On the <laughs> bonus <laughs> footage. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, so, yeah, so like basically um, I sat down and I was like, you know, there, if I can make it where there's a drive through window, it's convenient. And then, then people are now making a conscious decision. It's no longer in the realm of convenience. Now it's just a conscious choice. Do I want this or that? Um, so I waited and waited and waited and looked and searched and I didn't find anything. And I was really just hoping to like buy my time so that one day someone could open this and I could walk away and I could go hike the Appalachian. And so that was really- Is that still one of your goals? A thousand percent. Okay. It's gonna happen. <clears throat> of um, course. So it's on the docket. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and being dead, it's really easy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of time. Yeah. So I, uh, so I had this this game plan of being like, I, if I go and don't find this spot, then like, where else would I do it? And so one day, I was actually walking downtown, and I saw a, I was just walking, and I saw this other building across the way, and it was like a four lease, and I was like, I mean, I could I could probably call or something. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do that. 
So I had a friend, and the universe is so funny to me. Like I literally, like I couldn't fight my journey if I wanted to, it yeah. just won't happen. Right. So I'll have an idea and then it's like, I'll just wait for that to pop up and then yeah. come. So I was uh, at the food truck and I have a friend um, and I'd been talking about like, yeah, I think I'm gonna do like a, a brick and mortar and because the five years had come. And so he introduces me, I feel bad for your arm. You're good. Um, just work out. Um, protein. Protein. <laughs> do you want some protein? No. Um, so I, uh, I like was talking, I was at the food truck and he's like, hey, I have a friend and he's a, real, a, a commercial real estate agent. And I was like, shut the fuck up, no way. And I was like, oh my God, I have to meet him. So he gets introduced, he's like, we're gonna find you a spot. And his energy was just lovely. I was yeah. like, all right, bet. So we start chatting. So anyways, I find this place down here and I was like, maybe this is it. So um, I go to go look at it. I'm super excited. Um, he ends up having a heart attack the day we're supposed no. to go look at it. So that got pushed around. Um, I saw it with a different agent. It was a whole thing. And then wow. I just, the space was, it was doable. It's a good location. I was like, maybe I'm gonna have to build a, a kitchen here. It was a whole, it was, yeah. if I got into the details of the beginning part of this journey, it is yeah. insane. Um, but basically, uh, it was like a maybe. And then I had to go to um, Washington State. So I'm in Washington State. I get back. My sister calls me the day I get back. She's like, hey, me and my son, we both tested positive for COVID. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy just had a heart attack. I can't be around him. Like, yeah. I'm, I've got to isolate for 10 days. And we, we, I was supposed to get back and sign papers on this other spot. And I wasn't in love with it, but it was like, whatever, I guess, like, I can make anything work. Yeah. So um, I get a phone call. Um, Monday was my COVID release time where I was a free bird again. Right. Um, and Friday, they were like, hey, a, a spot had just come available. It was actually super weird, but it just came available on Friday. We're not going to put this stuff in the window. Um, we want you to look at it um, on Monday. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, and like he was selling. He was like, this is like, so I'm, I want to have like, um, eventually we do beer and wine now, but eventually we want to have like mixed drinks and stuff. And you have to have two bathrooms for that. And like, there's a whole lot of little things wow. that the other spot didn't have. And so Monday came and um, I walked in the door and I was like, it was, it was just it. Like yeah. it just, I just knew, I was like, oh my God, this is, yeah. this is the spot. Like I, like everything you see, I saw, like it was like, yeah. it, the walls were different. It was a, it was a mess, but I just saw it so yeah. perfectly. And I was like, yes, thousand percent. Yes. So, um, signed the papers and then that's how this came to be. The name was, um, as I was walking and looking for places, <clears throat> I thought to myself, wow, no one can spell authentic. Not nobody. <laughs> I've owned a business for five years and now one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, guys, listen, it's not it's not antique cafe. It's we'll put not, it down at the bottom so y'all. It's yeah, really. And yeah. then if you can spell it without looking at it yeah. again in the comments, yeah. you win a prize. Yeah. My ad admiration. So yeah, that's yeah, the prize. Yeah, yeah. Um so no one could spell it or say it or do anything with it. So there's a ton there's a actually a cafe in Japan called Authentic Cafe, and I think they have ninety percent of my likes. Um, so you guys want to throw that my way. So, uh, yeah, so I was like, I'm not doing that again. I want it to be, I wanted this to be a feeling. I want it to be an experience. I want people to come in and feel something. And I was like, you know, just like a good vibe. And I was like, vibe. this is brilliant. And then I was like, yes, vibe. And then I was like, okay, well, I, I also thought like, I kind of shot myself in the foot with authentic because it was authentic cafe and people, they're like, oh my God, you serve food. And I'm like, yeah. cafe. Yeah, of course we serve food. Yeah, like yeah. go to Europe. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I didn't want to box this place in because I wanted to serve beer and alcohol. I knew that at the gate, but I also wanted it to not be a bar or a club. I wanted it to be right. a restaurant. So it was like, I wanted to pick something that was like trendy and cool. And I looked on like every platform to find all the names that were like trending and like what were like names that don't box a title in. And so gastropub actually means, it's big in Europe. It's really, it just means fine dining with beer and wine. So it kind of combined it combined it combined it. Yeah. <laughs> everything um i wanted for my vision with this so wow yeah that was it the end and we're done so yeah, yeah. So it was great. um yeah <laughs> how long has this been in business so far so we just hit our one year mark um on the 11th Congrats. of july thanks <laughs> yeah what have you learned in that one year Jesus. <laughs> so just funny. one big thing just one big thing yeah. um systems are everything yeah, yeah they will they will wreck you or improve your life in ways you can't know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Say I'm say I want to come in here and I want to taste what this place has to offer. What would be and I know this varies, but what would you recommend for someone to try for the first time when they walk in? So, we make everything 100% from scratch. It's all from us. Um and it's all 100% plant-based. And for the protein people, as I myself do ultra marathons and I love I work out a lot, so protein is a big part of my life. We do um our seitan we call it like the devil's chicken because it's it's not Satan, but it's Satan, um, is what we make our chicken out of. And so it's actually 24 grams of protein, four grams of carbs. Wow. 
and uh, it's amazing. So my favorite would be like the buffalo chicken with cheese and avocado, um, and it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty big, badass if I do yeah, yeah. this on myself. So I always recommend that, and that comes with a house salad. But I would, we do our red potatoes are fire, so I highly recommend them too. Yeah, I saw uh, some red potato ingredients back there. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to show. But it won't be on film. Unless you want to come, <laughs> that's what you win. If you come <laughs> and yeah, try yeah, them, yeah. then I can give you a recipe, <laughs> and then we'll hire you. Then you can make the red potatoes. I can take a nap. This is great. Yeah, this could be a talent search thing. So yes. if you guys want to work here, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What would I wash that down with? Mm, okay, so good question. Um, it depends if you're a beer drinker or if you're not. Both. Okay, so if you are, um, I would say the state of lunacy is probably one of our biggest sellers. Um, What's that? The state of lunacy is one state of lunacy. Yeah. Lu right. It's not easy, you guys. State of lunacy. Lunacy. Yeah. Got it. Just put this entire interview in like. Point Subtitles. X. Yeah. <laughs> speak yeah. like I'm running yeah. out of time um, so that's one of our uh, I really enjoy that beer it's really good I think it's a local one okay um, we tried to pick beers that n uh, they're also 100% vegan a lot of people don't know that they're not all vegan but uh, mm. so we tried to pick that and also from local breweries so we stayed within the area so we're supporting local cool. um, and I would say if you're gonna do maybe a drink our juice is beautiful so we press we fresh press our juice we've got um, I think it's the kale yeah or the morning glory or like Higher. Really? Okay. That, that, correct me if I'm wrong. That sounds like a, or feels like a summertime type of drink. Yes? So you can, um, honestly, fresh pressed juices are great anytime. Anytime, anytime yeah. I mean, you Do you have a warm drink for wintertime? Say I want to come in here and get cozy. Good question. We're actually coming up with our wintertime menu, so we will be having that up very soon. You have to yeah. check in to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I would say that, honestly, the reason why juices are so cool is because you're literally, like, I mean, how often are you eating 12 carrots in a single sitting? Every day. I mean, who isn't, right? Yeah. So, I mean, but if you wanted to, like, add now, like, 24 carrots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Yeah. Um, so, if you wanted to add 24 carrots in your day, you would just, you smash it into a drink, and then it's it's so, like, you know, bioavailable. It goes straight to the cell. So, that's one of the cool sides of juicing, and you're maximizing your nutrient density. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so nerd moment. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Everyone in my nation. My, my moments are all nerd moments. I feel like that. I mean, I feel like there's obviously a science to all this yeah. too. So what would be something you could tell the viewers that they probably don't know about being vegan of the best benefit of it? Something that you know, because that what you just said is like, oh, it goes straight to the cell. Yeah. These are things I didn't realize. So but what, what's that one thing that you wish yeah. more people knew? Yeah. You were too um, suffering on animals 100% by going vegan. <laughs> I mean, just kidding. I'll oh, go, crap. We'll go into a nutrient side. Okay. <laughs> Your viewers like, yeah. turn it off. Yeah, yeah. I won't go to Putting down, down, down their chicken sandwich. I don't judge. I'm not Planet, <laughs> planet Fitness, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I would say, honestly, like, it's, it is crazy. There are, uh, so uh, a fully whole food plant-based diet is the only diet that's been, like, triple blind, peer-reviewed, studied right. uh, to um, reverse heart disease, reverse type 2, type two diabetes. Um, it's been shown to significantly decrease a, the growth of cancer cells. If you want to live longer, this has been proven to be the diet to do it with. And right. I know people have things to say about this. Um, I'm a big fan of like citing my sources. I'm a big, big fan of like showing like documentation because to me it's like, I, I if tomorrow, somebody came out and was like plant-based diet isn't the healthiest diet I would still do it because I do it for the animals but right. um, but it being also the healthiest diet is another thing that's tremendous and when I say that I mean that with being whole foods is, is critical because a lot of people will be like well, well Oreos are vegan and I'm like that <laughs> you're right you're right but whole foods packaged yeah. foods are not really good across the board right yeah so I'm trying to think of like a uh, like an education moment or something yeah. that you can have like an education corner but because like someone like me is not well educated in this stuff could come in here and be like, uh, is that true? And you got like this little education corner and I flip through As a book. As a matter of fact, that I love yeah. that, you're at, that you say yeah. this. So our goal is we're going to be, um, we're still in the baby stage of life, but. One year in a business. This is still baby. We're doing our best. Yeah. Um, is that on our menu, so we're going to have a digital menu so you can see stuff. So it'll have our base menu so you can see what's right. the stuff. And then it's going to show photos, but also facts. Hey, because, I mean. yeah, absolutely. And I would love like to have a house of like scan this QR code for some fun, like plant-based facts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the goal to me is the education side because or VR put me in a plant 100% done and done. That's brilliant. <laughs> this is me being a plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like so to me, it's like getting that education out there, showing people like what that looks like. Um, you know, because even if you like, I'm I'm such a fan of people living their own life. Like I like all of 
yeah, like I have so many friends that aren't vegan at all, but they're interested in like, hey, uh, you know, I'm curious about this or how can I make this happen? Or like, you know, what's a thing I can adjust? And I'm like, bro, I got you all day. Like yeah. these are easy hacks. Like yeah. I, I live this every day and I'm super convenient focused. So yeah, I'm here for it. And um, fun fact, okay, so about protein, if you wanted to just dive into that, just mm -hmm. a scotch, no, just kidding, no. okay. Okay, while you're thinking, I'll tell your audience. So one fun thing about protein is that it's in everything. Everything has protein. Um, we're talking about like the complex, like the amino acids, 13 like right. cr critical amino acids we have to have. Um, and oftentimes people are like, well, you know, vegan food doesn't have that. And that's a huge fallacy. Um, but the, you can also food combine, combine. So like protein stays in your system for up to 12 hours. If you throw some rice in your day and you've had right. some beans, you literally created a complete protein. Yeah. Amaranth is a complete protein. There's tons of them out there. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot more than meets the eye with that. Do you know who Nate Diaz is? Yeah, yeah. So he's a straight vegan. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. But some of the major, um, actually as uh, world Olympians are almost a, the majority of, well, they're really? starting to flip, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I what I was thinking about earlier is like I was trying to find the right words for it, but like a th thoughtful Thursday or, you know, but yeah. trying to make it where you educate something, that's you know what I mean, on it and go live. All right, go Facebook Live, but educate because there will be people who want to tune in and learn a little bit more. And who are they going to go for the 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 uh, item vegan expert, facts. the yeah. vegan fact, or whatever day it is? It's accountability because people are going to show up there at a certain time on the day. But you get to educate the people yeah. too. That's a honestly, that's a great idea because um, that's that's where I thrive. Like I love like yeah. diving in and finding out stuff and like learning stuff and having my sites to be like hey these are the facts that that we have like we can only do the best that we have with the, the information right. available you know science is constantly changing and adapting and we're adapting with it and so the current science out today is this and i'm not a doctor nor do i play one on tv like i'm just rolling you're definitely going to need that like scrolling at the bottom 100%. i'm like please don't yeah. base your life on this shit yeah. unless you want to this is yeah. for you yeah exactly. i'm just a business owner out here no one shit about yeah. stuff yeah i mean and that's honestly part of it is just being curious like i mean i like right. my brothers were very like uh combative as far as like ideas so if you had an idea you had to back it up so i learned young to be like hey this is what i know this is how i know it don't right. fight me fight them so right. i can definitely give you guys the sites to like you know discuss things on but yeah i would say as a at large there's tons of information out there and if it if it even ignites people to be curious i've i'm right. happy with that yeah so wh where, where would the the live go like what platform would they have to go to to see that I feel like you're putting me in a spot. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. We we only had a whole conversation about how terrified I am to do this. <laughs> just <laughs> off screen. Nothing nothing big. Yeah. Um, so it'd be... Uh, just if you were if to. If I were to. Yeah. Um, honestly, so the goal is actually to start doing probably uh, Facebook and then... Okay. I'd probably do my live on Facebook okay. <clears throat> and then clip it and then throw it bits on okay. different platforms. Okay. Yeah. I love it. So tune in. Tune in. I think that'd be a really cool thing. I got a few questions for you. Ready? For sure. I just moved to Fayetteville. What would you tell me about your business? Ooh, um, well, kind of what we talked about earlier. So we're 100. percent Next question then. No, That's I'm it. Not. And I'm drinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it would be the same commercial that I give everyone. Yeah. 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 Totally. Best compliment you or your business has ever received? Oh my God, I don't know if I could pick a best because if you guys go on Google right now and you look at our reviews, Vibe Gastro Pub Fayetteville. Oh my gosh, the the things that people say, like I can't even keep up with how to be thankful for the words they're using. It is just like, like it hits me. So yeah, I would say go on Fayetteville Foodies, go on the, on our like reviews. Like people are just tremendous. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, I would say you're the first to say check out our Google reviews because there's so much. That's cool. You know, I would also say that that's attributed to my freaking amazing manager Kim. She is like. She's amazing. Um, she literally was like, she'll if you're in here and you eat here, she's gonna tell you like, hey, uh, oh, you like the food? Hey, by the way, why don't you go on Google, leave us a review. A lot of yeah. people will see that going down I-95. We're the only fully plant-based restaurant within 70 miles. So like wow. there's a uh, an app called Happy Cow. So it's fully plant-based and stuff. So we get a ton, like if you're a vegan, you know about this app type of deal. And we just get so many people from that. And so on 95, we're just the most obvious choice because we're just deep in about and uh, yeah. Do you have to pay for that app? No, it's for free. Okay, is it? Okay. Yeah, link right. it. It's good. I love that. That's cool. Best perk of being an owner? Um, I've, I've, I've almost completely won, 
wung myself off of sleep. Like I no longer, I'm weaning myself completely off of sleep. So I just don't need it anymore. Right. And I live on caffeine, but I also write that caffeine off of my taxes. So yeah. it's been so nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How much sleep do you get a night? Uh, actually, um, surprisingly, I, I get probably close to five hours. But I wake up, I go to bed early so I can wake up at like four or five to work out. Yeah, I'm a 4.30 dude. Yeah. Totally. Last question, you ready? Outside your business, what would you tell someone who just came to Fayetteville they'd have to do while here? Ooh. Um, hmm. Probably watch your YouTube channel so that they could know what okay. places to hit in Fayetteville. Not for nothing. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Do you have another one? Oh, okay. I do appreciate that plug, that though. Was good, that was good. Um, I would say, honestly, probably something they have to do while they're in Fayetteville. I'm super big into nature, so I love uh, the Cape Fear Trail is awesome. If you just want to, like, it's beautiful. It's such a nice little, like, jaunt if you want to go through. Um, I really like that. Can I say a couple? Of course. Um, I love, so I love that. I think that um, the Arts Museum is really cool. Check that out. I think downtown is just awesome. Like we are, we have so many cute little stores. Like obviously there's this really great vegan restaurant uh, called Vibe Gastro Pub if you want to check that out. Um, but there's like, I mean, it's just such a cool little downtown area. I really, really like it. And then Haymont, which is just up the hill. They have a lot of really cute stuff too. So I would just honestly just be outside and check out the little shops and stuff like that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. We have a Sprouts, so that's cool. Um, you know, but I would say most of the stuff that I would I would encourage people to do would be outdoors. Also, Patty's is really cool if you like the nighttime scene. Um, they've got trivia on Friday, which is really cool. Yeah, I think people talk crap on Fayetteville a lot, and I think that it's, to me, I've been all over the world, and it's all pretty much the same. Like, you're going to get a very similar things, places, yeah. and it's if you know where to look for places, then you kind of explore the way you want to. We've got cool trails. We've got cool, like outdoorsy stuff like we've got cool indoorsy stuff so yeah yeah man and i I, pre I appreciate that because you're exactly right and coming down here is a really cool spot hay mount really cool yeah. spot trails really cool spot and I, I i remember i said that to a buddy too and basically your vibe will attract your tribe 100%. right and, and no matter your location you can always find that good circle that you can enjoy this Fayetteville or any other place yeah. right as long as you got the right people around you yeah I think Jim Rowan talks about that he says Jim the man. Oh, he's he is the man he yeah. really is um, he's like he tells the story of a person walking down the street and he was like yeah like uh, new people came into town they're like hey what's the town like and they're like well what was your last town like and he was like oh well they were it was terrible it was full of terrible people and he was like yeah it's probably gonna be the same here and then the next one walked by a new couple walks by them and like hey how's the town they're like oh well that was the town in the last place you went and they're like, oh, it's really nice. People were really sweet. And he's like, you probably find the same here. It's yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, you find you, you're what's going to be moving through t space and time. And yeah. I think when you kind of know where to look or know what to look for, you find cool places. Totally. If you love Jim Rohn, give a like. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell everyone at home before we shut this thing down? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, just go explore. This is, I love this as an outlet because yeah. in truth, like you get the the backstory to places like we are constantly going in and out of every store and every place and it's so rare that we know how how this thing came to be like the history of it you know and like it's easy to look at something as a final product and be like oh wow like it's done and not realize how much blood sweat and tears went into that to create something magical for people and I think that like having a platform where people can kind of express that or understand that is just magical so i think i think what you're doing is fantastic so well thank you i also think like if if we went deeper if we had like a four hour like my wow. old podcast whenever you, you're ready i'm ready for like a four hour we totally the story would be even deeper so you know you, everything you guys heard, heard here today all that like struggle and going through each business and what i learned and failed here well failed learned here and then moved to the next business and what 20 ish minutes maybe i don't know but if if they just went deeper on all the stories of all these business owners, I think they would find a huge connection somehow to these people and, and actually buy into the business and the person. Yeah, and I'll also say that like, whether you're watching this because you are interested in Fayetteville or you're interested in this, uh, you know, just the local businesses, or you're watching this because maybe you're considering being an entrepreneur or like mm. evolving in this way, I'll tell you like, you, uh, we were talking about it earlier, the only risk is a risk that you're not taking. Like if you have an opportunity or you've got a heart to do something or to change something or to be a change somewhere, like the, you're the only one stopping you in that way. So, I mean, what you lose is, a, is so minuscule compared to like what you can gain if it works. And you're literally the only person who would be standing your way at that point. So I highly encourage it. I think that you've got enough people obviously on this platform to be able to like reach out to somebody to ask them. So yeah. 
I am ending on that. That was perfect. That was awesome. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. And y'all gonna see the B-roll and all the cool things about this place. Please come and visit. Let them know I sent you. And thanks again. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you. You're lovely. Appreciate you guys. Woo. You may have noticed I had a different t-shirt on. Well, I had to come back and get a little bit of B-roll. But what did you guys think about this episode? May have been one of the longest ones right as of now, but I think it was worth it. I think it was worth it to hear her story, hear where she came from, the struggles, the wins, and where she's going next. Tell me what you thought about this and let me know when you go find Fayetteville.